Well, you know what? We have found out that you can never get enough of the Crazy Jake stories, and right now, Jack is gonna share another one with us. Well, in 1993, I was going out first water, and there was a two guys coming out first water with a pack horse, and the pack horse had ordinary lawn rock or yard rock on it. There's no out of first water area that's, that was either rhyolite or dacite. The rock was either rhyolite or dacite. It wasn't ore. It wasn't anything that resembled ore. And it was poking out, and I picked a little piece out. And, uh, well, they had stopped to get, get a breather for their horses. And I looked at it, and I said, oh, yeah. and, and the guy on the horse, uh, one of the men on the horse turned around, and he said, put that down. Put that back right away. And, okay, I, I knew there were crazy guys out there. I knew, uh, and I'd known the story already of Crazy Jake. Everybody knew that. It's one of the first stories you learn when you come to this area. So I, I, I didn't equate, put the two and two together. And uh, I said, uh, well, listen, let me take you guys' photos. This is a great photo because we don't get too many guys carrying ore out of the mountains. Let me, please, let me get your photo. The guy pulled his gun out on me. It was a, it was a revolver. Looked like a forty-five Colt. Uh, looked like a forty-five Colt revolver because, being a policeman, I carried a six-inch Colt at one time, so it looked like Colt to me. It had that black finish on it, and he said, "No pictures, no pictures." He was really mad. He was, acted like a crazy man. I said, "I just wanted to get a photo. No pictures." And so he, I put my camera away. I said, "I'll tell you what. I'm gonna put my camera in my backpack." Will that make you happy? He said, yes, no pictures. He was really upset about that. I looked at this guy. So I had an opportunity for five minutes to look at a guy. Now, when a guy, a person does something, almost a violence, and points a gun at you, you'll remember that guy forever. You'll remember him forever. And so I've had this picture burnt into my brain of this guy, and I'm going to look him up, see if there's, any reason why a guy would do that. It was yard rock that he was carrying out. But the, the, the other guy on the other horse looked like, uh, like you, he, I'll tell you this, he didn't have cowboy boots on. His plants, pants were light blue. He had tennis shoes on. He looked like he was a, he looked like he was a flatland tourister as people would call that he was an ordinary jamoke from back east somewhere. And he was going out into the mountain with a guy that was dirty, grubby, looked grubby, unshaven. And a guy that was downright serious about his having his photo not taken. Whew, why not? I've only met two or three other people like that in my whole life that say no in the mountains. So I, I got no problem, but I... Let them go, and they go on around the bend, and they're gone, and I'm saying, I should have taken that photo while they were leaving. I scrambled to get into my backpack to get the camera, and I only carried little cameras, so at that time I was carrying a little wee one, and so I was scrambling to get it, scrambling to get it. By the time I get it up and get it focused, whatever, and like a manual, gone. The shot was gone. The guy in the front was gone. I only, I only had the guy, so I didn't take the guy's the back picture. I don't care about him. It was the whole scene that I wanted to have, a, a, a prospector coming out with another prospector or whatever, or his, or his money man, the guy that, that uh, grub staked them. And that's what I was thinking, that this Easterner or whatever it was, Westerner, but city slicker, city slicker, I'll call it, he grub staked this prospector to go into the superstitions and bring out some ore, or bring out what he thought might have had mineral gold. I didn't know at that time that there was no gold in the western end of the Superstition Mountains. I didn't know that at that time. I didn't know the demarcation line was about at Hewitt Canyon. Anything east of Hewitt, you probably in right around Garden Valley East and North, you could find gold, but nothing. So, but this first water, 
when I went back and started talking to somebody I knew about it and started looking it up, he said, well, that sounds like Crazy Jake. I said, it sounds just like, I said, he wasn't a tall guy. And he was, he was bald on top, hair on the side, because he, he took his little hat off to wipe his head from sweating. And uh, he was bald on top. And I said, he, he looked like a, a cab driver from New York City. You know, and I think Crazy Jake was from New Jersey or New York. So anyhow, I go back talking about it, and I start looking up the story of Crazy Jake. And I find the photographs of him. I said, damn, that's who it was. But then I started reading more about it. And said, it said that Crazy Jake died about 1991. And here was the story. He died in Phoenix, a supposed heart attack. A doctor certified him dead. And then they shipped the body to Wickenburg for cremation, then brought back the, the dust back to Phoenix for burial wherever. And I would talking to some of my newly acquainted Dutch hunter, things are poo-pooed, said that couldn't have been crazy, Jake. He died in 91. You couldn't have seen him in 93 or 94. Ah, there's the mystery. The mystery? <laughs> well, crazy Jake, you know, took millions of dollars from doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, whatever. He'd take your money. He loved young girls and partying, spent a lot of money, and... He was a flim-flam guy from the word go. He was a flim-flam guy. Talk people, should have been a used car salesman back in the day. Crazy Jake had probably made his millions there legally, semi-legally anyhow. But reading more about it and, and talking to Bob Corbin later, I met Bob Corbin, talked to him about Crazy He prosecuted Crazy Jake. I got to, That's another story, though, for another day, that whole scam thing. But reading up on Crazy Jake, and the newspaper are quoted that Crazy Jake had paid two women, did he flim flam, and there was about 120,000, but he had paid them 47,000, and then he went to jail and he feigned illness or whatever. They let him out of jail after two years. After two years, would have made it about the time he might have been in the Superstition Mountains bringing out rock, yard rock, and getting enough money to live, the, live a life. I always figured Crazy Jake went to Hawaii and was laughing and was just a tourist and wore a wig. And nobody would know him over there. That's my take on Crazy Jake. I think he cheated death. He cheated everybody. He Why cheated everybody. <laughs> Why not death? I think Crazy Jake cheated death faked his own death. He had all these lawyers that he owed money to, so he was going to pay some money back to one of those doctors, give them back some money or give them something. Yard rock that he said was gold ore would have been another scam. Yeah. And then he went on his merry way with some young bimbo on his arm and flies to Hawaii and lives till he dies. Jake, I hope you did it, but you should have never pointed that damn gun at me. <laughs> That's my story on Crazy Jake. So did Crazy Jake fake his own death? Was he still alive? Just another one of the mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.